Hey everyone, welcome back. This is going to cover uh, the first pass through green and red Brinstar and Kraid. So, uh, last time we left off going down this elevator. And at the bottom of this elevator, what I do, as you can see, is I'm holding right and jump again. Uh, just like I mentioned in the series, uh, series section, doing this skips the turnaround animation coming off of the elevator. Um, this is different than what you would do in any percent, and the reason for that is because in 100%, um, what we actually want to do, since we have full missiles here, is we want to um, shoot this door as early as possible. This is a really aggressive strat, and if you end up missing missiles, uh, you're just going to lose a bunch of time, and um, you'll have to go back and, and get those missiles before you can open the door. So if you're, uh, if you're struggling with this, you don't need to do it necessarily. You can just um, you can just land on this platform down here and then shoot the door. But uh, as far as the optimal strat and what you know what I do and what what a lot of people do, again, hold jump and right. You'll spin jump off the elevator. Uh, here, what I do is I hold down uh, to go into an aim down pose, which makes the K go turn around through this bug a little bit easier. You can also try and just avoid the bug. Uh, you could fall down through here, for example, but then you're gonna have to deal with this guy too. Um, so I just do a, a turnaround Kago through this. Uh, they're called Zilas. It's a little bug guy here. From here, uh, you can see that I'm holding angle down, L, holding the angle down button. And as you're passing this guy, or after you pass this red guy, you wanna shoot your first missile. It's going to shoot the missile in the trajectory where it's going to hit the top of this door. From there, you want to hold forward. See how I'm holding forward here, right on the D-pad. And you want to shoot another missile. What that will do is it will Doppler this missile, the second missile. Um, I talked about Dopplering shots in the speedrun basics and general movement tutorial. Um, but essentially, we're adding the forward speed to this second missile so that it will also hit the door rather than bonking the floor here. From there, you shoot three more missiles as you land, which will end with five missiles, which is enough to open this door. You land on the left edge of the platform here, and then you run and jump through the door. Now, it's worth noting you might think that you want to get as much run speed as you can into this door, uh, which will make the next room faster. But actually, uh, if you see here, jumping scrolls the door down. Uh, and we haven't talked about this yet, I don't think. But uh, you want the door, uh, generally, when you're doing these runs, you want the door to be as close to the center of the screen as possible. Because before it can move across the screen like this, it has to actually center on the screen. So see how after we entered, it goes to the center of the screen. So jumping earlier and higher through the door, we'll move it closer to the center of the screen there so that it doesn't spend as much time scrolling to the center before it's able to move across. I hope that makes sense. All right, let's take a look at what Behemoth does in this room. So as I mentioned in the last video, Behemoth does not have an angle down button. Um, that kind of complicates this strat for him, so he's not able to do uh, the most optimal version of this strat. You'll see he still does the spin jump off the elevator, and he still has missiles selected, and he still does a, a downturn Kago through that Zila. But he only does one missile as he's falling, and that's because in order for him to angle down, he has to hold down and right on the D-pad, which is going to um, automatically move him forward so he can't shoot a we'll call it a stationary um, angle down missile as he's falling he can only shoot a, a missile angle down as he's also moving forward so he just shoots the one missile here and then he shoots four to open the door it's not that much slower uh, it is just a little bit slower and that's a, a relatively common theme um, that happens to Behemoth throughout the run just because he doesn't have the angle down button. It's honestly, it's not a huge deal. Um, like I already mentioned, obviously he has more than proven uh, his ability to go fast without it. 
and he's a consistency first player. So yeah, um, not trying to hate on his decision not to have Ingle down, uh, but this is one situation where it does uh, prevent him from going quite as fast. You also notice that he also jumps pretty early through the door and that it scrolls down even further than mine did. So yeah. Okay, so here we have the first major sequence break of the game in this route. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a mock ball here to get under the gates that are going to close. So normally uh, you would need speed booster to get past these gates, but instead we do this mock ball here and that allows us to get super missiles early. So if you look at my inputs, um, I, I did already uh, go over mock balls again in the uh, speedrun basics and general movement tutorial. But essentially what you're, what you're seeing here is that I release jump here. Um, you can hold jump up all the way to the ceiling if you want, and that will affect the timing of the damage boost a little bit later in this room. And it's a little bit slower. So I release jump um, about halfway through right here. And then I repress jump. So you can see that gap here. So I release jump and then I repress jump. Um, during this time period, I'm aiming down. Okay. And then I release down and repress down, which gives us that soft morph onto the platform. And then as I repress down, I roll my thumb over to the right. So down and right are both being held. And then just right. Uh, make sure that you are holding jump this whole time or the mock ball will fail. As we reach the last gate here, you want to unmorph. Uh, you can do that by tapping jump or you can press up. I'm also holding R, uh, which is angle up. And the reason for that is so that I can quickly shoot out this block here in the ceiling. After shooting out the block, do a spin jump, a wall jump, and then another wall jump. After that second wall jump, I hold angle down. What this does is it breaks Samus out of the spin pose. This is kind of a blind damage boost. Um, so you're going to have to find your own timing for what works for you. And again, as I mentioned before, if you do a full jump here, so if you were to jump all the way up to the ceiling, it's going to make the timing of that damage boost different. Um, the reason for that is that the waivers at the top of this room are constantly moving off screen, except for the one that's on the far left up here. So when you get up here, all of these waivers have been flying around the whole time since you entered the room. And what that means is they might be in slightly different positions depending on how long you take to get up here. So just keep that in mind if you're, uh, if you're struggling to find uh, the timing for the damage boost. You might want to adjust uh, what you're doing for the rest of the room prior to the damage boost. But this is, uh, it is generally blind and uh, it's just something that you'll have to get a feel for. If you miss the, the damage boost, it's best to just land here on the corner. Um, even if you fall back down, just jump up and get on the corner and then run left. Um, since the waivers are still moving off screen, it's, it's generally not a good idea to um, try and do a damage boost after missing the first one. You're just going to end up wasting time. So, um, so we boost to the left here. Make sure that you're holding jump and left as you land. That will skip the turnaround animation as Samus lands. Um, if you release the boost midair, like say if you were to release, uh, release left or jump right here, what would happen is Samus would stop moving to the left and she would do a turnaround animation, um, which takes a few frames so it's slower. So make sure that you're holding left and jump this entire time until you land. Um, if possible, you probably also want to be holding dash. You can see I'm not holding dash here, and that's just a muscle memory and um, controller grip comfort thing. Uh, it's something that I've wanted to change for a long time, and I just haven't quite implemented it yet. But you can see that I do press dash pretty much immediately after landing, so we just lost you know one or two frames of dash speed here. Holding dash, you run to the left. You can do some arm pumps to go just a little bit faster. And then what you want to do is a very short hop ledge grab onto this, this ledge here. If this were any percent, uh, you know, I would be recommending that you jump a little higher and try to try to kill this waiver. 
But since this is 100%, we actually need this waiver to stay alive. So we run to the left. You can jump, uh, you know, as you're about to collect this super missile. You'll collect the super missile. And then if you just hold jump and right during this fanfare animation, which you can see in my hand cam down here, that's what I'm doing. I'm holding jump and right on the D-pad. That will buffer the inputs to automatically damage boost as the fanfare disappears. So you can see I'm holding jump, dash, and right as the fanfare is ending. And we automatically damage boost to the right. From there, you just want to do a few arm pumps, time your jump a little bit early, spin jump down around this corner. You want to stay in spin until you are landing here. You can shoot the super missile as soon as you're passing the door. The earlier the better. Wait for just a brief moment and then run through the door. If you break spin here, Samus is going to land on this ledge and that's going to be slower. So that's why you want to stay in spin here until you're past the ledge and then you can shoot the super missile to open the door. All right, so you're probably going to see some pretty similar stuff from Behemoth in this room. He does wall jump up the right side. Again, this is a, a timing and consistency thing. I think if I recall correctly, this ended up being a little slower when I was testing it as opposed to going left or, or going up the left side, I mean, over here. Um, but again, the most important thing is actually getting this damage boost and uh, your internal timing is going to change from person to person. So whatever gets you this damage boost most consistently is what you should do. You can see he also skipped the turnaround animation there. And he also is most likely buffering his inputs here to get the automatic damage boost back to the right. He stays in spin all the way down, shoots the door, runs through. This next room is pretty straightforward. You want to hold shoot as you're coming out of the door. That will open uh, this reserve tank. So see how it's in this little, uh, we'll call it a pod, I guess. The shot opens the reserve tank. You can then grab it. You want to jump across the gap and you want to push left um, to do a wall jump check to grab the reserve tank here. Alternatively, as you're coming through the door, you can do a short hop and mock ball through this, uh, this hidden tunnel first. That's actually what the task does. Humanly, um, myself, Zost, and Behemoth, and I think some others have all found that grabbing the reserve tank first is just a couple frames faster on average. Um, I think honestly that's just because of a, a human movement optimization thing, but really it's it's about the same either way. So whatever you're more comfortable with is what you should do. So we grab the reserve tank first. From there you can see I shoot the door, I run off, and then I do a soft morph, roll through the tunnel, unmorph just as I'm coming out of the tunnel, and then do a pretty late jump here. After jumping, I aim down, and then I press down again. That grabs a missile pack on the way up, which enables us to lay a bomb on our way up. Then you want to unmorph. What this will do is it will expand Samus's hitbox upwards so that she'll hit the ceiling earlier and start landing earlier. Then you want to remorph. Roll to the right as this bomb explodes these blocks. Lay a bomb around the middle to the right here. Um, the earlier the better, but if it's too far left, it's not going to blow up these second set of blocks. So make sure that it's at least in the middle here. We unmorphed so that just as the bomb breaks that block, we can shoot, which breaks this last block here, revealing the missiles. So you roll forward and collect the missiles. Now something that's not obvious to new runners, you don't actually want to hold left in this kind of a situation during a fanfare. 
Because if you do, what's going to happen is a frame perfect morph ball rolling turnaround, which will send Samus as a ball further right. It's kind of like a boomerang effect. It'll make her roll further right and then left. So you want to wait until the fanfare clears. Samus rolls to the right a little bit. You can see I'm not holding left yet over here. And then I press left, which prevents us from rolling all the way to the right and then back left. It's a pretty small optimization, but it's worth, worth noting. From here, you want to roll off, unmorph just before you hit the ground. That will prevent us from bouncing and also gives us the ability to do a short hop mock ball through this tunnel again. Unmorph as you come out of the tunnel, run forward, jump up, do a ledge grab, and then jump through the door. The reason we're jumping through this door, this is a pretty complex strat. Um, it is prone to failure, especially when you're starting out. And if you do fail it, you'll just wanna go back up through this block in the ceiling here, uh, run to the left and then go down through the, the super missile crumble block. But optimally what you wanna do, and you can see that I'm holding jump and down here, Samus hasn't activated in this room yet, which is why she's not aiming down yet. But as soon as she does, we're buffering that first down input. So she's rising up because we're still holding jump and we jump through the door and she automatically aims down. From there, I release jump once I know that I've cleared this platform. And then I immediately repress jump. So you can think of it as like a, like a release tap, basically. You just want to release it for a couple of frames and then repress it immediately. After we've repressed jump, we release and repress down. So if you look at the order here, release jump, repress jump, release down, repress down. That's very important because if you have released both jump and down at the same time, Samus is going to lose her forward momentum right here and she won't be able to mock ball. So make sure that you've repressed jump before you release down and that you repress down pretty quickly before Samus lands so that you can get this soft morph animation here. And then uh, just like any other mock ball, you roll forward from down to forward. In this case, it's left. You roll on under through the gates. This part isn't super important. Um, but you can stop on the third tile from the left here and then lay a bomb. Uh, I use this little shadow here in the ground to know uh, generally where I can lay my bomb and still have it break this block right here. Then roll back to the right, collect the missile pack. This is another situation where you generally don't want to hold left. I'll talk more about that in just a second. Roll through the, uh, the gap that was created here by the bomb breaking the block. Unmorph, shoot to kill this bug that came out of the pipe. Run forward, do a spin jump. You can collect this item dropped by the bug. Make sure you don't shoot to open the door too early or you'll land on the pipe. You wanna land past the pipe and then run and jump through the door. I mentioned you don't generally want to hold left as this fanfare is clearing. There is one reason that you might want to hold left as the fanfare is clearing, and this is something that you'll need to look into yourself because everybody has slightly different habits as they move through this room. But, all right, see these hopper guys? So any room that has these hopper enemies, the larger hopper enemies, or uh, the little, uh, they're called betoms, they're like little frog hopper guys, any room that has any of these enemies will actually normalize the RNG value. The reason that's important is because it means that if your movement is consistent throughout this entire room, all the way up to killing this bug here, this bug is going to give you the same drop. The reason that's worth noting is because there are certain windows where this drop is going to be a super missile or alternatively, a big energy. We would really prefer a super missile or a big energy over a regular missile. We would also prefer a regular missile over a small energy in this situation. 
So yeah, just worth noting, you can technically normalize the RNG to try and get a specific type of drop off of this bug. Let's take a look at how Behemoth does these rooms. So he also jumps across the gap, turns left to wall jump check the reserve tank, shoots the door, soft morph, jump morph into this missile pack, lays the bomb on his way up, unmorphs to bonk the ceiling early. This bomb is a little high, but I think it should still break. Yep, breaks the block, lays another bomb, shoots the last block out, grabs the missile pack, does not hold left, stops and then rolls left. Unmorph, short hop mock ball, ledge grab, jump through the door, and then he does a, another mock ball here to get under the gates, just like I did. He also stops early, lays the bomb around the same shadow in the ground, grabs the missile pack, shoots the bug, collects the drop, jumps through the door. When you're jumping through this door, you want to jump kind of high. And the reason for that is that you want to make sure that you clear this ledge and this block down here. If you jump too low through the door, you're going to land um, probably not on this one, but probably on this one. You can see there, I actually aimed down because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to clear this uh, clear this block or not. Aiming down um, near the end may help you avoid that, but you also want to stay in spin as long as you can because Samus actually moves forward slightly faster in a spin pose than she does in a straight jump or an in down pose. So I aim down to clear this block, I select Super Missile, turn left and right to avoid bonking the platforms on the way down, and then I fire a Super and run through the door. Now in older runs you might have seen people jumping through this door. The reason for that is because this door actually has to scroll a lot before it gets to the center of the screen. In my more recent grind, um, I actually decided not to jump through and fix this door for a couple of reasons. If you jump through the door, you're going to come out of the door, obviously having jumped in a spin pose. From there, you'll spin jump forward, aim down, and try to do a Kago mock ball uh, through this Zila. That is technically a little bit faster than this strat that I'm doing here, but it comes at the expense of some energy which we actually want to conserve energy so that we can reduce lag on Kraid in a few minutes. The other thing is that this Kago Mock Ball strat is pretty difficult to do. My consistency with it goes up and down uh, when I'm doing it, but it's definitely harder than this other strat. And then the last thing is that um, you actually lose time overall in this room doing the Kago Mock Ball compared to just running and jumping over these enemies. The time save actually comes from the door fix right here. So see, it has to scroll down pretty far to get to the center before it's able to go across. And that's where the time save actually comes from. You can see I'm holding dash, shoot, and forward here. The reason for that is so that Samus will come running out of this door with her arm cannon pointed out forward here. The reason for that is because I want to be able to shoot a missile as we're coming down this slope to kill this Rayo. And if Samus's arm cannon isn't already out, like this, when you shoot the missile it's going to count as an arm pump and she could fall off of this slope because of that. So that's why I was holding shoot coming out of this door. Again you want to shoot the missile kind of as you're passing. Uh, this corner on the way down the slope, jump as you're passing the Zila, jump high enough that you can try and collect this drop from the Rayo. A missile is good, a big energy is better. Um, you may also get a super, that's pretty unlikely. Super missiles are a pretty rare drop from these guys, but it's possible. Do a mock ball, lay a bomb uh, as you roll past the corner here, continue rolling forward, and then I look at this second little round 
flower thing on the ground here for where I want to lay my bomb. I did a little, little bit late there, um, but as long as it's on this or further right, it's going to break this corner block. After laying the bomb, I roll back left. That scrolls the screen to bring this guy back on screen. Uh, when he's off screen, he's not going to be moving, and we actually want to bring him over here. So we roll back left, he starts moving again, roll back right, the bomb explodes and we lay another bomb in the corner. Be careful not to time this so that Samus gets blown up and bounced to the left by this bomb. That is possible and it really sucks when it happens. So just be careful about that. Roll back to the left after laying this bomb. That will continue moving this guy over to the right. You can lay a bomb if you want to, but you don't have to yet. Over here, I mean. Lay another bomb in the corner right here. Roll back left. I lay a bomb anywhere in this general vicinity as this guy is touching the, the ground. That's my cue. So see, he touches the ground and I lay the bomb. And that bomb kills this guy, which leaves a drop for us. This is a small energy, which is not what I wanted. Uh, again, a big energy or a missile is better than this, but this is better than nothing. Continue laying the bombs to clear these blocks, roll back and collect the energy, and then roll through this last block. Unmorph, run forward. I do a short hop mock ball into this room. You don't have to mock ball. You can choose to arm pump through this next room instead. Um, I do the mock ball for a reason that we'll talk about here in, in just a minute. But uh, yeah, that's, that's generally how that room goes. Let's take a look at what Behemoth does in these rooms. So he also jumped pretty high through the door. So he's able to avoid these platforms. He opens the door with a super. And he has also decided to start running through this door rather than fixing it with a jump. He also shoots that ray out to collect. Doesn't look like he actually got a drop there. That's pretty unfortunate. Yep, no drop. <clears throat> Mock ball along the ground. He also lays a bomb in the corner. And he does a pretty similar thing to me, except he doesn't roll back and forth. He jumps a little bit earlier here. There isn't really a, a right or a wrong way to do that necessarily. I find it easier to do a jump a little bit later and the mock ball later, uh, but what he does is okay too. Might be a couple frames slower, not really a big deal. So we mock ball into this room. As you get to the corner here, you wanna stop. If you release forward, on the right frame, Samus will kind of like slide down over the corner. That's not super important, but in my experience, it does seem to make this part a little easier. If you've watched any of my streams over the past five years or so, you know that I go for something called the weave here. It's only very slightly faster and it's kind of high risk, high reward, but I still think it's a good strat. To set up for the weave, you want to bonk Samus into the right side of this platform here as she's passing it in Morph Ball. What this will do is normalize her subpixels, which will make the weave itself more likely to succeed. As she's falling here, right around the time that you're passing the middle to bottom of this ledge here, you want to push right. If done correctly, Samus will weave down through this platform without bonking. Unfortunately, I timed it slightly incorrectly, so we ended up bouncing instead. Bounce. The bounce loses about 40 frames. The weave saves about 20 frames over not doing it. So essentially you save 20 or you lose 20. We'll talk about alternative strats here in a minute. As you're dropping down, you want to unmorph and land on the right edge of this platform. Run forward, jump as you're passing these flowers 
and do a, a pretty high jump. Doesn't need to go all the way to the ceiling, but it does need to be high enough that you clear this corner and then this corner. In any percent, you would grab these missiles right now. We're actually gonna save those for later because it's faster to collect them later. So you'll drop down, you'll do a soft morph on the floor here. Roll over to the right, lay a bomb. You can use this little flower as a cue for where you wanna lay the bomb. No further left than that. This is gonna break these two blocks. You might see some people roll back to the right and then do a mock ball through this gap as it explodes. I find that to be really hard to make any faster, so instead I just opt to time my roll to the right as the bomb is exploding. Drop down all the way to the floor, unmorph, run forward, angle up, shoot the charge beam to reveal it and collect it. Last part of this room here, you want to hold right as you grab the charge beam. As you reach the edge of this platform, you want to jump. I missed the jump here. I was just about one frame late. But ideally, you want to jump from the edge of the platform. That will get you a spin jump up to here. You'll do a wall jump and then another wall jump. And then you can morph and roll through this gap. Something that you can't see right here, and this is a slight downside to this format that I'm using for this tutorial, because we, uh, we could show Samus otherwise, but that's okay. These tiles here are obviously covering Samus, so you can't see. But they go up about like this. When you wall jump off of this wall here, you don't want to morph immediately, or what will happen is Samus will morph and kind of float all the way up higher and then drop down in a ball and bounce. Instead, what you want to do is you want to stay in a spin pose until you bonk the ceiling right here and then morph so that you land earlier and can roll out earlier. Unmorph as you come out of the hole, jump up into the right, you can also turn right before unmorphing and then do a spin jump ledge grab onto this corner. I struggled to make that faster, so I don't bother. I just unmorph and do a straight jump and turn. Jump and morph into that hole. Unmorph as you come out of the hole or out of the tunnel so that Samus lands and then just run forward, shoot the door with a super missile and then just run through the door. So let's look at what Behemoth does. As you can see, he also mockballed here, but he doesn't unmorph as he's passing here. The reason for that is because that will allow him to do a down back to get through the gap without bonking this ledge that's sticking out here. Like I mentioned earlier, that is a little bit slower than successfully doing the morph ball weave, but it's significantly easier. So unmorph, aim down, push back, turn around, and fall. He also lands on the right edge of this platform here. Jump. He clears the corner, clears the second corner, and he is also grabbing these missiles later because it's faster to do later. He does a soft morph, lays the bomb pretty far left here, rolls on through, collects the charge beam, and then he is able to successfully get up and to here. So as you can see, he jumps off the corner, he's able to avoid bonking this corner as a result, wall jump, wall jump, morph, he does the turnaround spin jump ledge grab here. Roll through the hole, super missile on the door, run on through. All right, just a couple more rooms here before we get into Red Brinstar. This room is called Green Hills. 
After running through the door, you'll want to jump. Try not to jump frame perfectly as you come out of the door, but also make sure that you don't wait too long and run off the corner here. Um, it is really hard to press jump too early here. So you can kind of focus on just jumping as early as you can. Stay and spin until you're pretty far to the right and then aim down. That'll clear this ledge here. Um, if you did jump frame perfectly out of the door, you will bonk. So that's why you don't want to do that. But uh, try not to worry about that too much. Do a soft morph mock ball here. Roll off and bounce. That will bring you down here. All right. If this hopper jumped high, like you did, like you saw here, you can unmorph immediately and run forward. However, sometimes he's going to jump low. So instead of being up here, he'll be like kind of down here. In that situation, you'll want to wait to unmorph so that you don't take damage from him. If you stay in a ball and then just roll forward a little bit, uh, you'll avoid the damage. And in this situation, like I said, we want to conserve energy because that will allow us to reduce lag on Kraid in a few minutes. Run forward, hold a charge. Again, if this hopper did a low jump, you'll want to shoot him with the charge shot. Since in this situation he did a high jump, I hold on to my charge shot here. You can either do a spin jump or just run off this ledge. I do a spin jump because it's a little more comfortable for me. And then just as Samus is passing the top of this flower here, you want to release your charge shot. Notice that it looks like the charge shot is going to bonk here, but it doesn't. It's harder to do this shot if it's not a charge shot, but it's still possible. But the main thing is you want your shot to kind of hug the, uh, the top of this platform or go through the top of this platform here. We're jumping up so we can do a damage boost off of this bug. And notice that the shot hit the gate, so it's opening early now. Hold your boost until you land. Shoot after passing this hopper here. If you shoot before passing it, your shot will get eaten by the hopper. So shoot after passing the hopper. Run forward, jump, and aim down through the door. The reason we're aiming down is because we want to make sure that our charge shot is primed for the next room. And charge shots do not continue to charge in a spin jump. So notice that Samus doesn't start glowing until right about here. So the charge shot isn't ready yet when I jump. And if I had stayed in spin, then it wouldn't be ready in the next room either. As you land, you want to release a charge shot. That will hit the cac attack here, which will drop a super. So collect the super missile. Don't run forward too early. So notice that I kind of wait for a few frames here before I run forward. And that's because if I had run forward immediately upon landing, I would actually miss that super missile drop. We really need that super missile. So make sure you don't run too early. You can ledge grab or aim down and land on the edge of this platform. Run forward. Here's a neat little trick. So notice that I'm holding dash and then I release dash here. The reason for that is because Samus has already reached her uh, maximum horizontal speed without speed booster here. And I needed to free up my thumb so that I could hold a charge shot here. So since I no longer needed to be holding dash, I go ahead and just release dash and then charge. You want to release an angle down charge shot before running off the corner here. If you release it on the same frame that Samus comes off of the corner, she'll actually shoot the charge shot straight. And we want the charge shot to be an angle down shot so that it will kill that cac attack there. After releasing the charge shot, you want to select your super missiles. Shoot a super on your way down. That will open this door, which was a super missile door. Collect the super missile from the CAC attack. And then depending on which route you're running, you want to mock ball through this door. Let's take a look at Behemoth's rooms. So similar to me, 
He jumped late, does a soft morph mock ball here, rolls off, bounces. Hopper also jumped high for him, so he unmorphs early, holds a charge shot. That Hopper jumped low, so see how it would have been in his way? So he kills it with the charge shot. He does the runoff turnaround, releases another shot, hits the gate, does a damage boost off the bug, shoots after the hopper, jumps and aims down so that his charge shot will be ready. He releases the charge shot a little bit too early, unfortunately. So he just kills the CAC with normal shots. Lost a few frames there, probably about half a second. And then he does the same thing here as well. It is worth noting, if you miss this gate, that's okay. You'll just need to shoot it as you're falling here. And in that situation, you'll actually need to kill this hopper because you won't have iframes to just run through it. I usually shoot it with a missile. Um, you, can, you can kill it however you want to. But the, the upside to that is that because then you don't need to wait until after the hopper to shoot your shot to open the door, you can shoot it and start charging earlier. And then by the time you get here, uh, your charge shot will be ready to go. So you can actually stay and spin when you jump through this door. And from there, you'll still be in spin. And when Samus lands in spin, she'll automatically release a charge shot and kill the CAC. So it's a little bit easier, uh, but it's also slower because in that situation, you have to wait for the gate. So, okay, into Red Brinstar. So we mockballed through this door. You want to lay the bomb on the left side here. You can even do it um, basically just on the uh, on the crack here. And it's going to break out this left half of this longer block. These are both uh, bomb blocks. So you see I lay the bomb and then I jump up. And then I aim down. And I turn as I'm about to land to get the uninterruptible turn animation. The bomb breaks the blocks, and we maintain our fall speed as a result of that. So it's kind of like a quick drop. From there you morph, fall down, unmorph as you're passing kind of the middle here. Do a down back, so down and then back. Shoot, which will break out that first block, and then shoot again to break out the second block. Then go left. You can either just run off and fall down here, or if you want to go a little bit faster, you can do a moonfall. So you can't see Samus right now, but you can see I'm turning right here. And then I shoot, hold angle, walk to the left, and then press jump. That gets us a moonfall. Because we don't have gravity suit, we need to go down the middle of this room. This moonfall is pretty hard, because these rippers are in the way. But you can kind of weave through them. What I do is I turn left um, as I'm passing this X in the background here. And then I turn, I tap right to do a stationary fall on the middle left of this glowing column in the background. And that allows me to fall straight down through the rest of the rippers. There's a couple other ways you can do it. That's how I prefer to do it. And I shoot this door, run forward, and jump through the door. You can jump a little bit earlier than this. If you jump too early, you're not gonna make it far enough in the next room. Uh, but the earlier you jump, the less the door has to scroll before it gets to the center. From here, I hold jump until I hit the ceiling. And then as I'm falling, when I'm about to pass this black line in the background here, I shoot. That kills this scree here. Run forward, shoot again. That This shot is going to open the door for us. Jump, turn left, hold jump, and we damage boost. And if you do the boost correctly, you'll make it all the way into the door. In this room, there's a few things that can happen. 
if you landed before the door, notice that I'm still holding shoot here. If you land before the door, Samus is going to shoot and basically start charging a shot as you run through the door. Since we didn't land before the door, I release shoot. Notice that I released it here. If we had landed, I would have continued holding it. But instead, I'm just going to focus on holding up. And then as Samus lands, I shoot. If she had run through the door instead of boosting through the door, I would have been holding up and shoot, and then would have simply released shoot as the door was closing. So we're going to shoot out this block here. Then what you want to do is turn left and jump. This will get you a spin jump to the left as long as you jump before the turnaround animation is complete. You don't want to be facing left standing up against this door, or when you try to jump, Samus is going to do a straight jump and you won't be able to wall jump. So you want to do a kind of a turn left jump, then you wall jump on the left, on the right, and on the left again. And assuming that you wall jumped high enough, you can then do a wall jump morph up over the corner and lay a bomb. If you look at this background here, there's this vertical line. As long as the bomb is aligned on kind of the right side of this vertical line, it will hit this block. If it's too far to the right, it has a chance of bouncing Samus here, and we don't want that. If it's far enough left, it will not bounce her. You'll have to kind of play around to get a feel for this, but if you feel like it's gonna bounce you, you want to shoot just before it explodes, and that will cancel out the bounce animation. Notice that I did not shoot here because I was aware that the bomb was far enough left. So I just timed my shot as the bomb breaks this block so that I can shoot this block and then roll forward. I select super missiles, wait until I'm just about to land, unmorph, run forward and shoot the door. And then we want to jump through this door to fix the door scroll. As you're landing, you want to shoot to reveal spacer. You actually want to turn left before collecting if possible. I didn't quite do that, that's okay. And then you can just hold a shot to the left to open this door, ledge grab, and run through the door. You can hold a shot before the door, and that will start charging a shot. You can also just hold shoot in the door, it's up to you. Either way, this spacer shot as you come out of the door will break the block that was here so you don't need to do it later. You can just focus on jumping across and then do a mock ball. The background kind of scrolls as you're rolling here, but you want to lay a bomb um, basically anywhere in this background queue. So there's this block and then there's another background tile block. There's a vertical line. You want to lay the bomb anywhere right here. That will break this block out. I roll forward as the bomb is exploding so that it doesn't bounce me. And then I unmorph immediately, turn left and aim down, and then turn right as we're falling down here, which will get us a quick drop through this crumble block. From here, you can just hold dash and right. You also should have been holding shoot. Sorry for not specifying that. That charges a shot, which you can then release here. As long as you're holding right as you land, Samus will automatically skip that one tile gap. Then you just jump up. The charge shot should have killed the CAC. Collect the super, jump across, and run through. As long as you land on the left edge here, you can hold dash and shoot through this next room. If you land further right, you want to make sure that you release dash and then repress dash in this room. Otherwise, you're going to bonk this door before it opens. From here, just arm pump. Prime another shot through this room. Select your super missiles up here. And then you want to break these three blocks and run forward and jump across the gap. The way that I do this is I quickly crouch. So I tap down and then I tap shoot. 
So if you look here, I'm holding forward this entire time, but I tap down and then shoot. <clears throat> so that gets us a very short stop here. Then you want to shoot the second super as you pass the elevator, which will clear the middle block. And then what I do is I hold up and right on the D-pad. See, I'm holding up and right. And shoot just as you reach the third block, and then jump across. If you do a full jump, you're going to bonk this corner that sticks out here. So you need to jump and then release. It's kind of blind, kind of not. You'll get a feel for it the more you do it. If you did jump too low, you can try and do a wall jump here to save it. If you end up falling down here, you'll want to come back over here. There's a little uh, ledge here that you can stand on, and you'll run and jump and then wall jump up. That's probably the fastest backup. Shoot to open the door, jump, and wall jump check through the top of the door. The reason we're doing the top of the door, again, is because we're wanting to fix the door so that it doesn't have to scroll when moving across. So see how high the door is here? And then as we jump, it moves down so that it doesn't need to fix itself before it scrolls across. All right, let's take a look at how Behemoth does these rooms. So he lays a bomb on the left, jumps, does a quick drop turn here, just like I did. He morphs, unmorphs, and does down back shots, down through. He also does the moonfall. He does a, a tap left to fall straight here rather than going right and then left, like I do. But then he also does a, a left and then a tap right to fall straight here, like I do. He shoots the door, runs and jumps through. He shoots the scree right around the same time that I do. He also shoots the door. He went for a damage boost off the second particle here. It's not really faster. Some people find it easier. He messed it up, unfortunately. Because he messed it up, he just needs to um, essentially get through the rest of the room as fast as he can. He's also aiming up as he enters this room. He quickly does a shot, turn left, spin jump, and he does the same wall, wall jump morph that I do here. I think I actually stole that strat from him years ago. He's a little bit closer to the bomb here. I don't think he actually goes for the the further left bomb, but you can see he's shooting here. And the reason he does that is to prevent the bomb from bouncing him up. So he shoots once, then the bomb explodes, and then he shoots again to clear out the block. Same thing here, he jumps to fix the door, collects spazer, shoots as he's coming out of this door, does a mock ball, lays the bomb. He actually stays here, so the bomb bounces in a little bit. It's not really a big deal. And then he aims left, aims down, and holds shoot. Does a quick drop through the crumble. Releases the charge shot. Does the gap skip here. Collects the super. Lands on the left edge. Shoots the door. Runs on through. Arm pumps through the tube. Shoots. Shoots this door, selects his supers, and then he does roughly the same thing that I did. You can also alternatively do a short hop and shoot the top block first, then the middle block, then the bottom block with an angle down. Obviously, Behemoth doesn't have an angle down button, so that may not work for him. Some people find that easier. Um, I find the crouch easier, personally, but it's about the same either way. Jump across the gap. Don't jump too high, don't jump too low. Shoot the door, wall jump check through the top of the door. Let's back up here a little bit. There is an alternative route, and it's one that Zost runs when he runs 100%. There are some other people that run it as well. It involves going up Red Tower instead of down to get power bombs early, which prevents a revisit to Kraid's lair later in the run. However, if you're going to run this route, there are a few considerations that you need to make. So let's take a look. First of all, energy conservation is even more important if you're going to be running this route. So if you recall in the previous video, I explained that with these pirates, you want to shoot and run through them to save some time. 
If you're going to be going up Red Tower, you're going to be doing D-boosts through Hellway. And you'll need that extra energy. So you can see Zost here actually missiles the pirates like you would in any percent. So he missiles the two, and then he waits for the drop. This is something that has changed in more recent years. Typically people will missile the first three and then wait, because the RNG is normalized in this room, and that will generally give a better chance of a missile drop. But he leaves the pirate room with two missiles, which means then he needs to farm here, again, like you would in any percent. Another complication that comes up is your super missiles. Unless you get really good RNG, you're not going to have enough super missiles to make it into Kraid's lair, shooting all three of the blocks. So to compensate for this, sometimes people will shoot this door with five regular missiles instead of a super, like Zos did here. In this example, he just went ahead and used the super. If you are going to go up Red Tower, this is something that you'll need to focus on optimizing, similar to how you would in any percent, Fantoon first routes. Do a series of wall jumps to get up, then you need to do a hero shot and follow the shot upward so that it will break the block up at the top of the screen, which is currently off screen. You want to do a little bit of a later wall jump between these two plants on the lower side, and then get up through the door. You can jump through the door and then damage boost across Hellway, like I mentioned earlier. And then from there, you'll need to drop down through here. You can see he did a, a weave, so he shoots once coming out of the door, again here, and then one more time. That last shot will break the block down below this platform. He does a soft morph to land on this platform and then roll off. And then times have weaved down to avoid the zero, the slug, slug enemy here. Do a little bounce on the corner here and then unmorph. That fixes the door scroll here. Super the door, run through. Do some damage boosts. Collect the power bombs. Lay a power bomb. Collect the missiles. And another damage boost. This next room is pretty difficult to optimize as well. Essentially, you want to lay the power bomb so that it will open the door, and you won't have to wait for the door after getting up. He chooses to lay it right here. And then he aims down before he lands here at the top, which again fixes the door scroll. Damage boost on the way back. This second boost is kind of tricky. You want to boost down first and then back to get all the way over to the platform. This is something that I cover in the speedrun basics and general movement tutorial. But essentially, you need to be holding forward when you hit the spikes. So see how he turns to the right and then he's holding forward Samus boosts down, and then back. You can do a moonfall here to save a little time. And then from here, things are mostly the same. Zos did end up having enough super missiles to break these blocks. But if you don't, you'll just break the bottom one, morph and roll through. Realign yourself here, up against the remaining blocks, run and jump forward, and if you need to, wall jump here. As you enter this room, you want to be holding down and shoot. That will buffer a shot to break this block. Then you want to turn right, aim down, and shoot again. The reason we turn right is to save just, I think it's just one or two frames after morphing to roll to the right. If you're facing left in that situation, Samus will still have to turn around before she can start rolling right. Roll off to the right here and then hold left to drop down into this corner. Lay a bomb, unmorph and roll to the left, and then quickly turn around, do a short hop and mock ball through the tunnel to the right. 
if you're struggling with the short hop mock ball, you can just wait for the bomb and then roll through. It is a bit slower, but it's up to you. As I come out of this tunnel, I press jump to unmorph, and you can see that I'm holding L and R here. That will make Samus automatically aim upward from the crouch position so that I can shoot as early as possible. Open the door, wall jump, up through the door. If you look at my hand cam, you can see that during the door transition I switched to a piano grip. I hold dash with my ring finger, and I stretch my index finger over to the select button, while holding right and L as I'm coming out of the door. I hold select, and then I press X, which gives us an auto deselect on the missile up here. So you can see the missile starts flashing. An auto deselect will fire one of the ammunition that you have selected and then automatically deselect. So I fire that one missile on this key hunter so that it won't bonk us. Then I jump, aim down, shoot just before landing, and turn into the hole. Alternatively, you can choose not to jump here and simply aim down and shoot and then fall into the hole. If you do that, you'll need to aim down as you're falling or this key hunter will swoop and bonk Samus. You do want to do a little spin jump off of this ledge here as that will fix this door so that it doesn't have to scroll as you run through it. From here, I missile these pirates and then just as I'm passing this column in the background, I shoot two more missiles. That ensures that they'll hit Mini Crate so that he is exploding and drops the super missiles as you run past. From there, you want to shoot to open this door, jump into a ledge grab, and run through the door. This room's a little tricky. I've been doing it more aggressively recently. If you want to be safe, you'll want to jump from here all the way over here. I've been landing on this platform recently because it can save a few frames if you do the deboost correctly. But this deboost becomes pretty difficult in that situation, and as you can see, I actually messed it up. If you land on this platform, simply jump, turn left, and then damage boost over to the door. Hold the boost all the way until the door so that Samus skips the turnaround animation and then fire your super missile immediately after landing to break the door. Here you see me turn left and then aim up. The reason I'm doing this is because it makes it easier to do a spin jump into the door as it's opening. Aiming up allows us to still open the door since we have spacer beam. So after the eye door is done disappearing, shoot up to open the door, turn right, tap jump, and then as Samus is entering the door, turn left to wall jump check the door. Let's look at how Behemoth does these rooms. So he also turned right and shot down here. He also lays a bomb and unmorphs, then runs to the left and mock balls. Because he does not have angle down mapped, he cannot do the aim up while crouching by holding L and R. So instead, he needs to finish standing up before he's able to aim up and shoot the door. He also auto deselects the missile to shoot the key hunter. And then as I mentioned, he simply angle down shoots this block, runs and falls in, and he aims down so that this key hunter won't bonk him as he's falling. A little spin jump off the ledge and then run through the door. He conserves a missile here by shooting this pirate with a charge shot. And then he shoots mini crate in the similar spot that I do. He does the safer strat jumping farther, which makes sense. And he actually cancels the damage boost, causing the turnaround animation here. It's not that much slower, but in all of my testing, it has been a little bit slower. He did also adopt this door entry at my suggestion, though. Because Zost has the power bombs, he can collect these missiles early. 
So this room's a little bit different for him. He missiles all four of the key hunters, then does a jump morph and lays a power bomb. Collects the missiles, does some quick drops down through, and then jumps through the hole. Time for the Craig quick kill. In this tutorial, I'm just going to cover the most effective method of doing the Craig quick kill. Lots of people tend to find this easier as well. There are some other methods, which I have other tutorials for, and I may do a more comprehensive Craig quick kill tutorial in the future as well. To start off, you want to morph and roll up against the door, lay a bomb, unmorph, turn right, and remorph. This will cause the bomb to bounce Samus into the position that we need her to be in. If she is not in the correct position, the second missile will not damage Kraid. Depending on your energy here, you can drop into the spikes as Kraid is coming up out of the ground to reduce lag. If you have 103 energy or more, you can do four hits, which will reduce the most lag. Depending on how much energy you have, you can decide to do three or two hits instead. In this situation, I only have 102 energy. As Kraid is rising up out of the ground, I drop into the spikes for the first hit, and then I let them bounce Samus back up onto the platform. I wait for her to stop flashing, and then I drop off again. Before hitting the spikes, I unmorph, I use the jump button to do this, and then immediately remorph, which will place Samus down in the bottom left corner of the spikes. From there, the third hit will automatically bounce Samus back up onto the platform as long as you don't press any directions. This position will also work for the missile to do damage to Grade. Whether or not you're doing the damage to reduce lag, I watch Kraid's hand here for a cue to know when I should unmorph and start shooting missiles. As he's coming up out of the ground, he curls his hand back and forth. On the second time that he's uncurling his hand, I typically unmorph, stand up, and then as he's curling his hand down, I jump, release jump, and shoot twice. Be careful not to shoot too fast or this second missile will get eaten by cooldown. You can only shoot a missile once every 10 frames. The first missile should be aimed roughly at his eye level here. It will connect, which will cause him to open his mouth briefly, and the second missile will make a connection with his mouth here doing damage. After a very brief pause, you then want to select super missiles, jump and shoot once, fall and shoot another one, and then jump and shoot your last missile here. Let's watch in full speed. And one more time in slow motion. One, two, one, two, three. At this point, Crate is dead. And from here, we just need to decide when to start running forward so that we can run through the door at the back of the room. One side effect of the quick kill is that the camera will not follow Samus to the door. So you'll be a little bit blind doing that. Traditionally, we used to always skip the drops here unless we really, really needed them. I found that on average, it actually works out for me better to collect these drops, mainly because we can get a super missile and some regular missiles more often than not, which help us for the next few segments of the run. To time when I want to start running forward and also collect some drops, I wait until Kraid's eyes are passing through the floor, and then I start running forward. I do a jump near the edge of the screen. You want to hold jump for a relatively long period of time, but not too long. And then hold angle down. 
and shoot the door. Again, you can see the inputs over here on the left. So I run forward, jump, angle down, shoot the door. Please note the door will not open unless you're standing right next to it. So if the first time you shoot it doesn't open, you probably want to do a short hop just to make sure you're not still down on this lower level, get Samus up next to the door if needed, and then shoot again and run through. You also want to hold a shot as you go through the door so that you can simply release the shot coming out of the door, which will reveal the Varia suit. You can either jump and do a wall jump check to save a couple of frames, or you can just run forward and grab it that way. Let's do a quick review of Behemoth's fight. So he also positions with the bomb. He shoots some of these rocks, which I've never found to be beneficial, but there's nothing wrong with doing it. He does drop into the spikes to reduce the lag, and then he uses the same two missile, three super kill that I already explained. Just a few more rooms and we'll be on our way to Norfair. As you run back through Kraid's room, you want to shoot the door relatively early. You can either mock ball through this door, or you can jump and aim down, and then run through the door. The aim down will fix the door a little bit so the transition won't be as long. Behemoth does it a little bit more aggressively than I do. He tends to be a little bit more optimal with this particular door fix than I am. As you come out of this room, you want to jump across the gap, jump forward and damage boost off the spikes. If you do a low enough damage boost, you can make it all the way to the ledge. If you happen to fall short like I did here, just shoot the door, do a short jump and run on through. If you have two or more supers, you'll want to use one of those to kill Mini Crate here, since he will generally drop four supers for you, and you can only hold a maximum of five. If you have one super or less, in this case I have zero, you'll want to kill Mini Crate with two missiles instead. You can shoot them with angle down pretty much as soon as you come out of the door. You can hold a charge shot here to conserve missiles and kill the first pirate, or you can just missile all three on the way back. The important thing is that you do need to kill all three of the pirates, or the door will be locked. Also note, I do a little bit of Zodin pumping here. On average, it only saves me one to two frames, but that is something. With this door, you want to make sure that you are jumping at least uh, through the middle or higher part of the door. If you're too low, what will happen is as you attempt to come up through this hole, this key hunter is going to fly down and bonk you. Notice that happened to me here in this room. If that does happen, just do your best to quickly recover, jump up, and get out. Depending on how your jump through this door is positioned, it is possible to fall through the right middle part of the door and then perform a mock ball down through this tunnel. If you don't get the mock ball, just do your best to time a bomb when you think you've reached the edge of the tunnel here to reveal this block. And you'll see over here on my inputs that I'm already holding shoot here. This is so that I can unmorph as soon as I come out of the tunnel, and on the first frame possible, Samus will shoot to open the door. Because this is a flashing door, it will open more quickly than a standard door, which allows us to hold dash and forward without waiting for it, as long as you shoot on the first frame after unmorphing. From there, I continue holding shoot, and I angle up as I'm running through the door. I do this personally on the D-pad, but you could also do it with the R button or L button, depending on which one is mapped for you. After a brief fall through the door, I release my charge shot, which will reveal this energy tank here in the ceiling. I do a short hop ledge grab here, and then I jump, aim down, and turn to the right. 
The reason we do this is so that Samus will stay in contact with the energy tank for more than one frame. The reason that's important is because in this game, Collision works with an oscillator, determining whether she's touching the left tile or the right tile on any given frame. It essentially just does left, then right, then left, then right. So if Samus is touching both the energy tank and the tile to the right for only one frame, and it decides that she was touching the right tile, she won't collect the energy tank. This downturn makes it so that you collect it every single time. As you're coming out of the fanfare, you want to hold right, select a missile, This last BTOM should attach to you, and as you land, shoot a missile upward, which will kill all of the BTOMs. Assuming you don't already have power bombs, like Zost would, they will drop a small energy for you every single time. And assuming that your energy is still full from grabbing the energy tank, that will put 20 energy in your reserves, which can be pretty important later in the run. You can technically just immediately run forward after killing the BTOMs without worrying about collecting the energy. But that's only something that I would recommend doing if you're extremely invested in optimizing this as far as you possibly can. Do a jump through the door. As long as you're not too high and bonk the ceiling, any jump here is gonna work. And then as you come out of the door, do a wall jump to the left, angle up to shoot the Zila, shoot again to break this block, and then shoot up to open the door. From there you can do a spin jump and wall jump check through the door. Last room here. I hold left and angle down or shoot to break spin immediately. This will cause Samus to go uh, a little bit less to the left and we do want as much run speed as we can get here. Shoot your super missile as you're coming out of this mouth and then jump near the edge of the ledge here. Aim down once you're halfway or further, and time your morph so that you mock ball through the, uh, through the gap here. Make sure you're holding an angle so that you stop on a dime, and then go down the elevator. Now again, let's just review what Behemoth does. Same basic strats. He also messed up the damage boost. No big deal. He does the charge shot here that I mentioned. To conserve his missiles. He does an up shot here. I think I also attempted to, to do this. To break the top block early. And then he does a down grab to get onto this ledge. Alternatively, you can just spin jump up and then do an up grab and shoot here. It is slower, but it's much more consistent. Because he was high enough coming through the door here, the key hunter is not going to attack him on his way up. He shoots as he's getting up here to open the door on the left early. He does a down grab to get up himself a little bit earlier. And then he jumps and aims down through the door. His position was good enough that he's able to get this mock ball here. He lays the bomb and also runs through the door. He does the same downturn strat here. He missiles the BTOMs, waits for the energy, exits the room in roughly the same way that I did and then does roughly the same mock ball there as well. We went through Brinstar, defeated Kraid, and now we're going down to Norfair. So that's what I'll be covering next time. Thank you guys for watching this. I hope it was helpful for you. I hope you learned something at least. And if not, then hopefully you will in further segments. Thanks again.